As you can see, sitting in front of me is the Harley Davidson Livewire. You might have remembered back in September we were amongst the first in the media in Australia to ride them. Well, we've actually been given one for a couple of months, and now that we're 10 months down the track, we can actually give you a few ideas of how it's actually been like over the couple of months and its pros and cons. This is a high-end sports bike. They've got some top-notch components on it, like the Brembo brakes front and back. There's twin discs at the front, they'll pull you up on a dime. The suspension, you've got a fully adjustable mono shock here at the rear, and fully adjustable inverted shocks at the front. So the star of the show is the electric motor. It actually has a bevel gear with a single speed gear, so you've got no gear changes, there's no clutch. It's got a 15.5 kilowatt an hour battery rated to 78 kilowatts with about 116 newton meters of torque. And you really notice that, I mean, the um, quoted figures are 0 to 100 in 3.1 seconds. And I can personally vouch for that because the acceleration sometimes is nauseating. Another big feature of the live wire is the lightweight cast aluminium frame, which weighs about six and a half kilos. And of course, you can see that lithium ion battery pack also forms part of the chassis. Now, riding the live wire for the first time is very foreign because, of course, you don't have the clutch. There's no gears. You'll, you'll find yourself reaching for the clutch a couple of times. But after a couple of hours in the seat, you really start to get accustomed to how the bike feels. The power delivery from this electric motor is just amazing. It's so hard to explain because it's just seamless all the way through the range, instantaneous. And like I said before, it can get a little nauseating because it just doesn't feel like it's going to run out. It's quite an extensive um, computer system on the live wire. Just touch screen. You've got your different ride modes. So you've got your road, sport, rain, range, and then you've got three custom custom A, custom B, custom C, where you can set up your own. So if you have a look at road, that's got the 80% power, 30% regen, which is the battery when it's regenerating on the, like when you get off the power, and 55% throttle. And of course, when you look at sport compared to that, you're getting 100% power, 80% regen, and then of course, 80% throttle. So that's a, when you really want to have a go. Rain, well that completely, more or less disables the bike, so you've got no power, 15% regen, 30% throttle, so it's much easier to handle in the wet. And then of course you've got your range, which is when you've been doing your long trips, you've got your 40% power, 80% regen, and 55% throttle. Then when you go down into here, you can have a look at your customs. These are your setups, so you can set up your power to any sort of percentage you want, the regen, any percentage you want, and then of course your throttle. And as you can see, I've set it on 100% throttle, 100% power and no regen, so that'd be good around the, the, like around the city and everything, but of course when you want to regenerate a bit of battery power then that's when you're going to be sort of having it back in the regeneration mode and that's really good, I mean it doesn't give you a lot of extra battery power but it does sort of regeneration as soon as you back off the throttle. So now we get to the big question everybody wants to know, the range, which is something we couldn't really test on the launch as we only rode them for around town for a few hours. But now, after having tested a live wire for a couple of months, which saw me commuting back to Sydney from the south coast a few times, it's given us the perfect opportunity to really test out the range. You won't get the quote at 180 k's out of one run, but it does go close, depending on how you're riding it, of course. What was interesting is that on the trip back down the south coast from Sydney to Shell Cove, where I've been stopping to charge, it just had a, probably about 20% remaining. Although on the reverse trip back to Sydney, taking exactly the same route, it fell just under 10% as I rolled into town, which means you also have to take into account if the, if the way you're intending on taking has a lot of hills. Then the next problem that they are faced with is the infrastructure that just isn't there at the moment. You do have a few apps that you can download. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to go on a long trip. It just takes a little bit more planning than stopping at a fuel station and so forth. All it takes is look at the app, see which um, charges are available, which suit the bike, then of course just plan your trip around those charging stations and then after every three quick charges you need to at least do a long overnight charge with the charger at home. Now of course they come with the charger, it's a simple matter of just releasing the, the seat and then you can see the charger under here. This of course to the your house power point. Now this is the what they call is a um, 
a phase one charger. So what this does, you just easily open this slot here and this clicks into the top here. So that's for your home charger. Now with the quick chargers, you'll find that they're a bigger plug and they actually fit. They've got a um, section under here and that takes about 45 minutes to an hour for a full charge. Now what I will say, the infrastructure might not be there at the moment. It, it will grow over the next couple of years. You can organise your plan long trips, but like I said, you've got to do a lot of planning in advance, work out where the charges are, work out what charges are going to fit your bike and so forth. What I found is that it does add a lot more anxiety to the ride, but if you do plan ahead and you get yourself organised, the live wire can be a lot of fun. <laughs>